guys! So I wanted to show you my collection of fountain pens that I use with my planners. Before I start, I will just preface this with a little bit of history about my fountain pen journey. I had never used fountain pens until about a year ago and never thought that I would become a fountain pen person. They always seemed complicated and scary to me. And I didn't understand the point of them when you had friction pens, which erase and are really easy to use. But Around a year ago, I started trying to give up plastic, which I'm still working on, and I realized that I was going to have to stop using my beloved friction pens because the cartridges are plastic. And so first I tried mechanical pencils and then I missed having different colors of ink. And so I bought my first fountain pen, which was this, a Pilot Metropolitan. And I didn't know anything about fountain pens, but I watched some videos the Goulet Pen Company has fantastic videos that explain all of the stuff that seems bewildering at first about fountain pens if you're not used to them. And fortunately for me, James also used fountain pens in school. And so he knew about them, which, which was a big help because I was just like, how do I fill this? What, I don't understand any of it. So the Pilot Metropolitan, I think, is a good place to start because it's quite cheap, especially if you live in the US. They're about $15 in the US. In the UK, they're about £20, which seems kind of unfair to me because that's a lot more, but still, you know, like on the sort of reasonable end if you don't want to make a big commitment. And I really like the shape and the design. They just have this nice, like, kind of round cigar shape, and they come in different colors. So the first one that I bought was this silver one but then I quickly expanded my collection because I came became a bit obsessed with them and I got a gold one and a black one and a purple one which is my favorite and this I ordered from jet pens because they are not available in the UK in fine so I'll talk about nib sizes in a minute and yeah, I know it's kind of weird but at the beginning because I I wasn't familiar with fountain pens I had decided that the only brand or the only design that I would ever buy was Pilot Metropolitans because I think a lot of them are a lot more expensive and I just didn't really understand what the differences between them were and I like this design so I thought I'll just get Pilot Metropolitans in different colors and then I'll have enough for all of my different planners. So the thing about the Pilot Metropolitan which I really like is like I said for, for one the price I think for a, a metal fountain pen, because obviously I was looking for metal rather than plastic, both because of the environmental, you know, biodegradable consideration and because I think metal just looks better and feels more solid. Then another thing that I like about it is how it's, it's really easy. It's easy to use. And, you know, if you don't understand about fountain pens, like I, not that I'm an, at all an expert, but they seem less scary to me now than they did a year ago, much less scary. So you like take the top off and then you just twist this open and then you have, this is a, an ink cartridge and it, so it comes with an ink cartridge. So you just stick the ink cartridge in and then you kind of like push it until you sort of feel it like puncture and then twist this back on and that's it. You can start writing. So something that I like about this is that it just writes straight away. So often when you hear a fountain pen people talking on videos, they say like, oh, this one writes straight out of the box. And I didn't understand what that meant until recently when I got a fountain pen that didn't write straight out of the box. And then I was like, ah, what do I do? So I think this one is like very nice and reliable. And as you can see, I have a few of these and I've never had any problems with anything like ink flow or scratching or anything like that. So the cap is just a pull off cap, which I think at first appealed to me because I thought the idea of a, a, a screw cap seems sort of laborious and because I was coming from friction pens which you just pull off this seemed sort of the most natural to me so now I'm kind of a little bit more of a fountain pen junkie and I've got all these different kinds of cap mechanisms which I'll show you in a minute but I think this is just like a very good starter pen because it's not intimidating and it's it's relatively easy to figure out how to use it in terms of writing it's very comfortable so you can either write with it like this or you can write with the cap on top posted and I think either one is fine I usually put the cap on top just so that I don't have to worry about what to do with it but it's quite comfortable and it doesn't feel like it's too short without the cap and it has you know a very nice grip section this grip section is plastic which I think it would be cool if it was metal but 
I know a lot of people don't like metal grip sections, but it's, it's just a very nice, comfortable pen that's easy to write with. And let's just do a little writing sample here while I talk about the, the nib size. So this pen only comes in two different nib sizes, medium and fine. And I had learned quite early on that being left-handed, that the finer the nib, the better it would be for me, because if you're writing like this, you'll smudge the ink as you go along. And especially on Tomoe River paper, which is what I was mainly using because, you know, I have like a thousand Hobonichis. So, um, Pilot Metropolitan. Fine. Okay, this will be useful later when we compare to the other ones. So, that's what the fine looks like. At the moment, we don't have anything to compare it to yet. But it's kind of like, I would say maybe like, between, I feel like it's like a 0.5, maybe, between a 0.5 and a 0.7, which is not super, super thin. So it's like the thinnest that I could get on this because the only other option is medium, which was way too thick for me. And I felt like that was thicker than a 0.7. These are just my impressions, so I could be wrong, but that was my feeling. So anyway, this was the Pilot Metropolitan. And I think I would have carried on indefinitely with these were I not seduced by the allure of two things. One is the need for a finer line because with this paper, so this is a moleskine and moleskine is criticized for being not very phantom pen friendly, but I have actually found it to be fine. So like, for example, these are two pages that I wrote with, with a different pen, which I'll show you in a minute. And there's really no shadowing, no bleed through. I think it's fine. But with the Tomoe River paper, I found that fountain pen ink takes quite a lot longer to dry than gel ink and so I wanted a really fine pen because I was constantly smudging it and that and then the other thing that that uh, led me away from the Pilot Metropolitans was the allure of the clickable cap so I am a huge sucker for clickable caps with my friction pens I always had the clickable retractable kind and so I was kind of sad when I switched over to fountain pens that I didn't have a clickable cap anymore because it's just so convenient so that was when I discovered the Pilot Vanishing Point and its slimmer cousin, the Pilot Decimo. So these are a huge jump up in price. And if you are like, you know, if, if you've kind of started off on like one of the cheaper fountain pens and you're afraid of investing, I'd say don't worry about it for now. Like wait until you know if you like fountain pens or not. And then when you do, and by this time I'd already committed because I knew that I wanted pens that were kind of more environmentally sustainable that didn't rely on plastic uh, refills, which by the way, these come with the cartridge that I showed you, but they also come with uh, what's called a converter. And I'm just explaining that in case anybody doesn't know, because I was like, what is a converter when people are talking about converters? And a converter is like a little thing that you fill with ink and you can like kind of keep refilling it. And they have different, there are different mechanisms for different types of converters. So the one that comes with this is called a squeeze converter where you like squeeze it and then you kind of have to judge when it's full. So that is kind of annoying because you can't actually tell by looking at it, it's not see-through. So you, unlike the cartridge, it's made out of like uh, rubber, but it's black. So you can't see when it's full and you just kind of have to judge when you think it's full, which can be kind of annoying because, you know, you're like writing and you have no idea how much ink you've got left. So what I did eventually is use the cartridge. When the cartridge is used up, you can keep it and then you get a, a syringe with a blunt needle, which I got from Amazon. They're really cheap. And you just refill it directly from the from the ink bottle and you can use the cartridge like a converter as so you can keep refilling it and it holds more ink so that's what that's what i do with these so anyway that was a sidetrack but so i first got a pilot vanishing point and the vanishing point looks exactly like this except that it's fatter and it comes in different colors um, I sadly don't have that to show you because I lent it to James and it has now gone missing tragically, but it's not the end of the world because I actually prefer these as they're quite a bit thinner. So I'll just show you with, this. so this is the Pilot Decimo, which is exactly the same as the Vanishing Point, but thinner. And so I prefer it because if you compare it to the Metropolitan, you can see it's a little bit thinner. It's quite, it's quite sort of elegant and streamlined, but it's not too thin. This is like a nice sort of sturdy, hefty pen, but it's not giant. The vanishing point when I was using it for a couple of months, it felt like it was, 
it was too fat for me. It felt like kind of too chunky. I didn't really like the feel of it. So personally, unless you like a really fat, chunky pen, I I think this one is, is better. And in terms of price, they're comparable. I got these from Amazon. One of them I ordered from Amazon UK and it came from Japan. And then another one I ordered from Amazon US and, and got it sent to the UK because that was that was the cheapest and they had it in Prime. So uh, these are like... These ones that I got were like £100 each, which sounds just like absolutely scandalous an amount to pay for a pen. But when you think that they last forever, and if it's this amazing pen that you're going to be using every day, then I think that it, kind of like buying a really expensive planner, I guess, a binder. I've never bought a binder that costs this much, but you know, that is also something that we do in the planner community. So the thing that's really, really cool about this is that, ta-da, it's retractable. So it's amazing. It's like everything that you love about a click pen, but it's a fountain pen. And I think that's really cool. And as far as I know, the Pilot retractable fountain pens are the only retractable fountain pens out there. I've never heard of any others. So if there are, please let me know, especially if they're cheaper. <laughs> but I really like the Pilot brand because obviously I was already loyal to Pilot because of frictions. But... This is just a really, really cool pen. So I won't go into the detail of how you unscrew it and do all of that because Goulet Pens has a really good uh, video on that showing you how to use it. But I will just say that there is this odd design feature, which I think is like one of the main standout things about the the Pilot Decimo in Vanishing Point, which is that, or Capless. In the UK, it's called Capless and in Japan as well. But I think Vanishing Point is a cooler name. So because the it's retractable this is open and even though there's, there's this like little hood mechanism inside that that stops the ink from like kind of just like dribbling out of the pen with the cap closed but still just to be safe they put the clip here so that if you wanted to like kind of put it in a pen loop or a pocket it would be upright just to kind of avoid any danger of of, of ink leaking which results in this weird scenario where instead of having the, the clip at the top, it's like it's like it's an upside down pen. The clip is at the bottom and you don't hold it like that. This is this is the top. You hold it like this. So some people don't like that because it's just, you know, it's weird. So I would say if you're thinking about getting one of these and you like the clickability aspect, but you're not sure about the weird design, that if you try writing, just imagine that you're writing with a, a normal pen upside down with the clip like that and see if it bothers you or not. That's a sort of good indication as to whether it will bother you. I find this to be okay. The only time when it bothered me was the one time when I was using this for extended note taking at a conference and I was writing and writing and writing all day and I started to get like my hands started to get smushed and it was quite painful. But that was like by the end of, you know, like a full day of writing. So I think for just normal uh, you know, note taking and stuff, it, writing down appointments, it's absolutely fine and it doesn't bother me. And in fact, it's, it's quite good because the cap, the, the clip sort of gives you a, a guiding place to know where you're, when you're in the right place for the, when you're in the right position for the ink to flow smoothly, because with a fountain pen, because they have a point, you can't just pick them up and write in any position. You have to generally you have to write so that the point is sort of facing the right way, if you see what I mean. And on a pen like this, you can't tell. Like if you pick it up, you have to look at the nib to see that you're writing in the right place. Whereas with this one, the clip faces the same way. It's in the same position as the, the point of the nib. So you just pick it up. And if your fingers sort of meet here, that means that you're in the right position to write, if that makes sense. So I have this in two colors. This is... I think it's called violet, but it's actually kind of like a pale sort of lilac. And then this one is blue. And as you can see here, they're pretty similar in that they're both sort of pastel. These are the ones that I like best of the Decimo color range. And I think it's a really, really nicely designed pen. And it writes really well. And the nib, I will show you in a minute. This is the amazing thing for me because, you know, I was in search of this really fine nib. This is an extra fine. So this comes in a whole range, unlike this one, which only comes in two different nib sizes. This comes in extra fine, fine, medium, broad. I think that's it. I don't ever look too closely at the broad end of the spectrum because I, I can't use those. But this is Pilot. Sorry, Pilot, not Vanishing Point, Decimo extra fine 
and then you see I can just click it closed. Look how much finer that is. So that to me was a huge, huge breakthrough because now with, with this, I use one of these in my work planner, my Hobonichi cousin, and then I use another one in my personal planner, which is Hobonichi Weeks, and I never have to worry about smudging the ink at all. It's amazing. It's like a miracle. So I really, really suggest this, and I've never found another pen with a nib as fine as this, and I, I don't know, what, like, it's just hugely finer than, than the fine. This is the extra fine, but it's just, like, so much finer than, than the fine on this. It's, like, two different worlds. So... The one thing about it, I guess, is that sometimes, depending on the paper, it can be a little bit scratchy because the nib is so thin. But to me, that's worth it because I just hate smudging the ink. And, you know, there's nothing more annoying than writing a beautiful page full of planner notes in your planner and then looking back and seeing that the whole thing is like, Bleh. So that to me was just hugely important, especially for Tomoe River paper, which, like I said, to me feels like it takes a lot longer for the ink to dry. So with this, again, it comes with a cartridge and a converter and as always I, like the, for me the easiest thing just seems to be to refill the cartridges with a syringe once I learned how to do that and again Goulet Pens has a great video explaining how to do that it's really simple then you have a lot more ink capacity because something that I noticed when switching over from frictions is that I felt like with the converters the, and it depends on the type of converter you get I've only had pilot converters and I don't think they take that much ink so I felt like I had to refill my pens like every couple of weeks, which was really annoying to me. And when I switched over to using the cartridges and refilling the cartridges, I keep track of how often I refill my pens just out of curiosity. And it seems like depending on how much writing I do with my work planner, it's usually about once a month, which is like bearable. It's only 12 times a year. And with my personal planner, where I seem to write a bit less, it, the last time I didn't have to refill it for three months, which was awesome. So just to give you a, a sort of guideline. And for a while, these were the only pens I had. Well, only. I know it's a lot of pens, but they were only Pilots. And I was totally loyal to Pilot. And I thought, I will never branch out. I will never try anything else except for Pilot. And then I got into the idea of the demonstrator fountain pen. So a demonstrator pen is basically a transparent fountain pen. And I just thought the idea of being able to see the ink inside seemed so cool. Somehow with a big pen, it doesn't seem cool to be able to see the ink inside. But with a fountain pen, I was like, wow, a see-through fountain pen. That's amazing. So I was looking around and looking around, trying to find one that wasn't like preposterously expensive, like 200 pounds. And that I liked the design because you can get some really cheap plastic. See, well, they're all plastic because they're see-through. Unless I think there are some glass pens, but I haven't sort of got into those. So they're all made out of plastic, but there's some like really cheap models that are like five pounds but I wanted one that would last because I thought if I'm going to be buying something that's made out of in you know, like acrylic or resin or non-biodegradable material if it will last forever then that's not quite so bad so the one that I finally decided on was the Caveco student this is Caveco the first thing that I love about this brand it's a German brand pilot is Japanese is that they come in, the pens come in this awesome tin. It's this like really cool metal tin and I absolutely love it. So this is what I'm using to keep my spare fountain pens because yes, I do have a couple of other Pilot Metropolitans. Uh, and I just think this is such a cool tin. So the Caveco, basically I bought this because I liked the design of it and it was available on Amazon Prime and it was not too expensive. I think it was like 35 pounds, which is, you know, it's more than the Metropolitan, but it's not exorbitant. And I, I like the design because some of them, like the Twisby has some uh, demonstrator models and I just don't really, I'm not a fan of the design of it. I don't know why. I know they're very popular, but I just don't really like them. And then the Lamy as well. For some reason, I think Lamy is kind of like, I've heard other people describe it as a sort of love-hate pen and I'm just not at all into the design of the Lamy. So I really like the design of this one. It has this cool metal clip and it says Caveco on it in this font. And it also has this at the top. You probably can't see it very well because of my inferior camera that won't cooperate. But it it has this cool little logo that's the same as this. It says Caveco. So like kind of divided like that in this little circle. It looks really cool. I just like the design. It seems kind of 
old fashioned in a cool way. And then it says Caveco here and this is silver as well. So I really like the look of it. And then you twist this off. So this is my, this was quite a daring adventure for me because this was my first twist off, like unscrew cap, which I'd never thought that I would want, but it's because I thought it would be inconvenient, but actually it's not inconvenient at all. It's fine. It is a little bit more effort than the pull off cap, but it's okay. And the thing that's good about this, particularly in this case, is that it's very secure because a, a pull off cap, you, know, you can imagine it could accidentally come off. I've never had that happen, but technically it's a little bit less secure than this, where if it's in your bag, it can't come loose because it has to unscrew. So the main reason why I was so excited about this pen is because you can convert it into an eyedropper, meaning that you can fill the whole body with ink. And that is what I have done. So this was quite a daring adventure for me because, you know, I'm not a fountain pen expert at all, but I discovered through watching many, many, many YouTube videos that if you have a pen, pen with a resin, like acrylic, basically plastic body, you can quite often you can take out the cartridge. So this comes with a cartridge doesn't come with a converter like, like these, you can, you can take out the cartridge. And then if you put some silicone grease, which you can get in any like hardware store, it's really cheap. You put some silicone grease around these threads, which are, you know, like the, the thing that kind of, that, uh, make it twist onto the cap. Then you can just, take a syringe and fill the whole thing here with ink instead of putting it in a cartridge. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to be able to see the ink slosh around inside, which you totally can. And that's why I love this pen so much. So you can't see it very well now because it's pretty full with ink, but let's see if you can see at the top there, it's, there's a little bit where it's kind of empty. So it, when it gets to be half full, you can imagine it sort of looks like, I can't think of the right word, like not an hourglass, but you know, like so that you can see the, it's like sort of sloshing around inside. It's so cool. I love it. And obviously it has a practical benefit that you can see exactly how much ink you have left without having to open the pen as you would do. If you had a cartridge like this, you can, you know, you have to unscrew it like I did before and then you can see how much ink is left. But with this, you just look at it and you know exactly how much ink you have. And so, and you, you know, you can see like the color of the ink. And so the color of the ink will affect what color the pen is. So at the moment, this is a mix. It's like a, I mixed, green and purple, which was a fun experiment and came out with this color, which I'll show you. So yeah, like I said, it has a screw off top. It has a metal grip section, which apparently is not a good idea to make an eyedropper pen out of something with a metal grip section because it can like cause the, the screws on the, the like sort of threads on the inside to rust. But I looked on the internet and this pen for some reason is not that popular compared to the Caveco Sport, which I'll show you in a minute. And I don't know why, because I think it's an awesome pen. But I actually did find a couple of people who had done this and said that it was fine. So I thought, well, I'm just going to try it. And I've had this for some number of months now. I haven't had any problems with it. So nice metal grip section. You can write with it again, either like this or with the cap on posted. I do either just depending like it's fine like this. It's a little bit short, I guess, compared to the Metropolitan. It's actually quite, yeah, quite a lot shorter if you compare the two of these without the cap on. So you might kind of feel like you wanted to have a little bit more length to it and then you could, you could put the top on here and then you it's, it's, you know, quite, quite a substantial pen, but it's not heavy, I guess, because it's made out of plastic. And this is an extra fine. So this is another interesting thing. If you know about fountain pens already, this is not news to you, but if not, there's a difference in nib sizes between the same nib sizes from different companies. And the particular, particularly big split is between Japanese and European companies. So Japanese fountain pens are supposed to be finer than the European equivalents. And that's definitely been true with this. So this Caveco is an extra fine, um, but look at, how much thicker the line is. Caveco student extra fine. This to me is, I always feel like this is thicker than this one, which is a fine. 
And certainly compared to this extra fine, like there's no comparison. This is like, you know, five times smaller than this line. So this is the, the finest that you can get if you get a Caveco. And so for me, it's okay, but it depends on the paper. I can't use it on Tomoe River paper without, you know, being careful and waiting for it to dry. So I use this on other paper, which is sort of more immediately absorbent and, you know, where there's not as much danger of smudging. But like to me, this is not what I would think of as an extra fine. This is feels to me like a 0.7 when I used to use friction pens. But I love it because I love being able to see the ink. I just I love the design. I love everything about it. It's so cool. The only thing that I will say with this pen, and I don't know, I've had this now happen with two of my Covecos. This was the first one that I bought, but I've had it happen with two of them, is that sometimes you'll be writing and then all of a sudden you just get these like blobs of ink. There's like an ink explosion and there's just like, it's like the the nib just starts like kind of bleeding ink. It's really scary. And uh, so I've had that happen twice and I was like, oh, what's happening? And I thought that was the end of the pen, but then it just recovered. Like I kind of kept writing and, and like, you know, cleared off the excess with a, uh, with a cloth and then it went back to normal and it's fine. So I don't know what that's about. At first I was worried that maybe it was something to do with me having turned this into an eyedropper conversion, which by the way, if I didn't mention Goulet Pens has a great video on how to do it. It's really simple. So I'll link that down below. And, but, but it's not anything to do with that because it happened with my other Caveco as well, which I'll show you in a second. Anyway, so that's just something, I, so I don't know if that is, I've heard people say that Caveco nibs are kind of not completely reliable. And I don't know if that's one of the things that they are sort of known for as being able to happen because I've never had that happen with my pilot pens. So I don't know if that's just coincidence or not. But anyway, that is the Caveco student. And they also make this in, in other colors that are not see-through as well, by the way. But I just really like the see-through demonstrator model. Okay, then the next one that I bought was something of a, I don't, not quite impulse buy, but I really didn't need another fountain pen because as you can see, I've, I've got enough fountain pens, but I hadn't bought one in a while and I'd gone to Oxford to the library and they have a shop and they had some Caveco pens on display. And I'd seen them before on Amazon, but I'd never seen them in real life. So I was like, ooh, that looks really nice. And this was one that I had been considering. Then after I saw it in real life, I just broke down and bought it, which was a little bit reckless. So this is the Caveco Lilliput. And I assume the reason they call it Lilliput is because it's so tiny. So this is known as a pocket fountain pen in that it's much smaller than your average, like normal fountain pen. So if I put it next to the student, you can see it's, it's really, really tiny. And next to the Pilot Metropolitan, it's like half the size. So it doesn't have a clip. It's also really thin. So this is designed for you to just be able to like put in your pocket. And you know, if I, I always think of this as kind of like the pen equivalent of a Swiss army knife. It's like, if you're in an emergency situation and you know, you can't bring any stuff with you. It's like, what would you bring? You bring this pen and nobody would even know that you had it with you because it's so small. And then you could just be like, I have a pen if you needed one. But it's not really very practical in that it doesn't fit in most pen loops. Like, for example, this is my Doki Book Disc Agenda cover, and this is the pen loop. And this is, it's quite a big pen loop, but in that it, you know, it will fit chunky pens, but it's elasticated. So it just, look, it just like falls right through it. It's, it's quite... It's quite a slim pen. So this is a problem. And this is not something that I had thought about initially when I bought it. I was just like, ooh, pen. So I got this in the extra fine. And because it's Caveco, it comes in the same tin and it has the same sizes as this. So it's the same extra fine that's not really that fine. But I really like the design. So again, it has a little Caveco logo at the top. That's this one. And it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. I really wanted the copper one, but that was expensive and it wasn't on prime. So I got the silver one. It comes in like all different metal colors. What I was surprised about when it came was considering that it's metal, how light it is. It's just really, really light and feels kind of insubstantial, which to me was, was kind of a disappointment because I thought even though it was small, I sort of thought it would have like a nice chunky metal-y sort of feel, but it doesn't, it feels very, very light, which is a bonus if you want a very small, light, portable pen. If you just wanted to keep this in your bag, like, so that you'd always know that you had a pen in an emergency, then I think this would be very good because you wouldn't even know that it was there. So it unscrews just like this one. And this is designed so that you're not supposed to be able to write with it 
without it posted, without the cap on top. So you see if I tried to write like that looks silly, it's tiny. You can do it if you need to, but it's designed to be posted. So you take the top and then you screw it onto the back like this, and then ta-da, you have a normal size pen. So now if I compare it to the Pilot Metropolitan, it's pretty much the same size. Isn't that clever? So I think that's a really cool design because if you want you know, like a tiny pen that takes up no room. And yet, if you if you post it, you end up with a normal size pen, then this is brilliant. So there's not like much to say about the design because it's so sort of minimalist and sleek, which I really like. This is the grip section, which is it's all metal. The whole thing is metal. These uh, threads, you like if you hold it like this so that your fingers are sort of you know, kind of here as well as just on the grip section. You don't feel this. This is not sharp because I've heard sometimes people say with some brands that they can sort of like that this is a bit uncomfortable with these bumps, but this isn't at all. So let's do our writing sample here with the extra fine nib. And this comes with the same kind of cartridge as this. It's a, I think it's a, what's called a short international cartridge. Uh, but so I'm just using it until it runs out and then I'll refill it. It comes with blue ink. So this is the Caveco, but it's like a very nice dark, almost purplish blue ink. Lilla put extra fine. Now this pen, when I got it, it did not write out of the box. So I put the cartridge in, you know, like clicked it, started writing and then nothing. And I was like, ah, the pen doesn't work. The pen doesn't work. Fortunately, James came to the rescue because he was familiar with this situation from school when he'd use fountain pens. And so he said, you, if, you, if you take the cartridge out and stick the nib in the ink, or if you just took a bottle of ink and stuck the nib in it, then that sometimes gets it to flow. And it did, it, wor it worked, and then after that was fine. So I was really impressed with that tip. So you can see here, obviously, this is the same size as this one. Let me just screw this back on. And, it, you know, it's not, it's not like that fine, but compared to, but I'm kind of ruined, I think, because the Pilot Decimo and Vanishing Points are so fine, but... That's it. So I think pros to this pen, I, I really like how it looks when it's posted. So I think that this would be better for a longer writing session because it's very light. So it won't, you know, like kind of make your hand heavy. It's very easy, comfortable to write with. It's quite thin, which I like. A lot of people find it too thin, but I, I don't mind that. But I think it's not good as a sort of practical everyday pen because for one thing, it has no pen, it, it doesn't fit in any pen loops. That's kind of annoying. And for another thing, because you have to put the pen on and you have to screw it on, it, so you have to post it, you have to put the cap on and you have to screw it on, which as you can see, takes a little bit of time. So I feel like it's not that practical if you just wanted to get at, get it out, write down like 11 o'clock dentist appointment and put it back. It, it will take you, you know, like too much time to screw the cap on. So I think it's better for like, journal writing or writing long lists or things where you're going to have to have it out for an extended period of time. And for this reason, I'm I, not that I regret buying it exactly, but I kind of feel like this was not my best purchase because for me, I'm not really sure like how to use this to, to fill the best of its potential. Because I've got two planners, in my, well, at least one, often two planners in my bag at any given moment, I don't really need a spare pen because like each planner has its own designated pen. So like keeping this in its bag is not something I'd want to do because I'm afraid I would forget about it and then the ink would dry up because that is something that happens with fountain pens after a while if you don't use them. And for my other planners, I usually just get them out to write quick notes and it's not practical for that. And I don't journal or, you know, do anything where there's extended writing like that, except in my work planner where I have my work pen. So I'm not really sure the best use of it, but it's just so cute and adorable that I want to find one. So that is the Caveco Lilliput. And now we get to my last and most recent purchase. I say last, it probably won't be the very last, but I, for now, I don't want to buy any more fountain pens because I feel like I have more than enough. And that, let me move all of these out of the way to give this one pride of place here, is the Caveco Brass Sport. So this is another Caveco. So I only have two brands of fountain pens, in fact, the, uh, Pilot and Caveco. And I absolutely love this pen. This has become one of my favorite pens. I wish that I could just use this. If I had to like have only one pen that would just be like my one true pen that I would carry with me everywhere and use for all of my different planners, it would be this one. Although obviously that's not realistic because 
as we have already discussed, I need to have the <laughs> retractable, uh, very, very extra fine pen for the Tomoe River paper. So, and this being a Caveco, it has the same extra fine as the other Cavecos, which is not that fine. So that's not realistic, but I just love this pen so much. So this is the chunky, heavy, weighty metal pen that I was hoping for with the Lilliput. This is actually that. So this is made out of brass and it's the sport line. So they have a whole bunch of different sport pens that are made out of different materials. And this is, I think that their most popular pen, like the Caveco Sport seems to be like kind of the main Caveco pen. And at first when I saw it, I didn't really like it. I was like, what's that weird octagonal design? It, it just didn't look like, I, I don't know, kind of looked industrial and bizarre to me. But when I saw it in real life, that was when all of a sudden I was quite taken with it. And the idea that it's made out of solid brass, I think is so cool. So this is all brass and you can see what it looks like here. That's the end. And then this is the other end that has the Caveco logo in silver. And I just think that that looks amazing. And then it has the, like the logo here inscribed. Oh, not the, it says Caveco Brass Sport Germany. And I just think it looks so cool. It looks, it looks kind of like timeless and it does look sort of industrial, but I think the fact that it's, Brass is just, I don't know, I really, really like the look of it. So this is another pocket pen. So if you compare it to the Lilliput, it's a bit bigger than the Lilliput, but still nowhere near like a Pilot Metropolitan, which is like a kind of normal size pen. So it's still quite small. And again, like the Lilliput, it's designed for you to, you unscrew it like all of the other Quebecos that I have. And then you're supposed to put the cap on the end. So you post it and then it becomes a normal size pen again. So if we compare it to the Metropolitan again, da da. So you can see it's still a little bit shorter, maybe. No, I think it's almost exactly the same. Uh, so it's designed to be used posted. And you really wouldn't, you wouldn't want to write with it just like that. You can, you can, it's actually okay. It's, I guess it's just a little bit shorter than the, well, yeah, it's quite a bit shorter than that one. So it's, it's quite short, but with this on it, it's magnificent and it just feels so satisfying and weighty and I love it. I think it's awesome. So writing sample, there aren't going to be any surprises here. It's the Coveco Sport, extra fine. And again, it comes with the same cartridge which I'm just going to use and then refill so you can see all of my all of my different Cavecos have basically it's the same line it's the extra fine which are much thicker than the Pilot Decimo extra fine and then even thicker than the Pilot Metropolitan fine so it just depends on sort of how fine or thick of a line you want um, so I just really like everything about this I like the look I like the feel I like how weighty it is but how compact I just, I like the, the, the look of the brass. It just feels like it will be kind of really, really long. I mean, all of these pens are designed to last forever, but this one just feels like kind of really rugged and satisfying. And the only thing about it again is that it doesn't have a pen clip, which is annoying if you don't have, you know, if you, if you use pen loops, but this one, because it's thicker, it actually fits all right in an elasticized pen loop. So I can get away with just using it like that. There is an extra, clip that you can buy separately but I haven't done that because I really like the look of this and also the pen clip as far as I can tell only comes in gold and silver and I wasn't sure if the gold would match this brass and I was afraid that it would just kind of mess up the nice sleek look of this so because it does fit in the elasticated pen loops I'm just going with that but I just love the look of it and I love the fact that it it patinas over time because it's just this like kind of raw metal and I think that's so cool so let me just recap here i will show you all of these pens so we've got the caveco brass sport the caveco lilliput the pilot decimos oh sorry the caveco student in the demonstrator model the transparent model and then a whole bunch of pilot metropolitans of which my favorite is definitely the purple so that's it. These are my fountain pens. So I use all of 
these ones. These are just extras. They don't have any cartridges in, in them at the moment. I'm just keeping these until the day when I have whittled down all of my disposable pens and I'm not using any of them anymore because I'm sort of trying to get through the ones that I still have. Uh, and then I'll have these as, as extras when I want to use them with my other planners that have disposable pens at the moment. But I use all of these. These all have ink in them and I use them all in, in different planners. So these are all like kind of definitely very, very functional pens and I love all of them. And I love the idea that they're just like kind of built to last and that you can keep refilling them and that they will build up so many memories over time. So I hope that you found this interesting. If you're a fountain pen expert, please don't judge me harshly <laughs> uh, for being a fountain pen amateur. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.